Hi, future DE students and parents. My name is Jamie Campbell, and I'm one of the school counselors here at North, and I have with me. Hi, I'm jo Miss Jocelyn. I am a FGCU school counselor intern. So we're discussing today dual enrollment. So what is dual enrollment? It is an opportunity for qualified secondary students to take college classes for free while also earning a college credit towards your associate degree. So what are some of the benefits? It saves money. Dual enrollment students tuition and textbooks are free and it saves time since students can earn a high school and college credit at the same time. They can shorten the time required to earn the college degree. Dual enrollment offers challenging courses that are guaranteed a transfer to any public Florida college or university and most out-of-state universities. Typically, dual enrollment students um, graduate from college earlier and with better grades. So what are the steps? The first one is to apply. Then the second one would be to have an admission and then you'll be able to register for classes. So how do I apply? So we have a link here. You could always just search FSW apply and you have to fill out a portal and complete the application process. After you complete that application process, you will be getting an email with your FSD, FSW ID and information on um, future uh, application process. What we need to you to do if, if you're looking to want to be full time DE or DE student in the fall, you have to apply by Friday, February 8th before you can uh, take our AccuPlacer. We're having our AccuPlacer done on February 18th. So we need that you to have that and have your buck ID so that you can get registered. Please have your child look at their Google Classroom for updated information and handouts regarding this. This is what the book ID will look like. So it will give you your ID. It gives you library access, which we will be talking further in this presentation. It will talk about financial aid, which you don't have to worry about as a full-time DE, bookstore information and discounts to FSW events. So what do you need to do to become admitted into uh, FSW? For ninth and 10th graders, you have to have a 3.5 unweighted GPA. And for 11th and 12th, you need to have a 3.0 unweighted GPA. You have to pass your placement tests and you have to talk to your school counselor. So for AccuPlacer, they have replaced the PERT and that will be for the reading, the writing and the the math, the scores are listed there. So you have to have, as a DE student, you have to have that reading score. That is the most important score to have. So that's that 245. And then the math, you have 242 or 263 to based on intermediate algebra or college algebra, and then the writing of 245. If you do not get those scores or you have an ACT or SAT scores, you can use those as well. And those are listed right here on the PowerPoint. Students, if you do not have a, um, did not pass the writing and math, you have the opportunity to take some DE classes. You are limited to 12 credit hours and that it to pass uh, all three subject test areas. For math, there are different uh, placement exam scores that you would have to have. And as a student, you have three opportunities to take that AccuPlacer. Do you only have one chance? No, you do not. You, uh, there is no charge to retest. You, uh, we do ask for you to do some remediation prior, so going over your scores so you can improve those because you have three attempts, once per semester, to meet those scores. We always will use the higher scores. And if you do not, if you need to retest, you can do that remote. They have an online remote access, or you can go to FSW campus through their testing center. So some dual enrollment options, you can be part-time or full-time, also called early admissions. So the dual enrollment part-time, students would take some college classes at the FSW campus or FSW online, while also taking high school campus courses. 
Um, the credit limits are outlined by the articulation agreements and grade level that we'll discuss later in this presentation. And then the early admissions or collegiate high school program, which means you're a full-time dual enrollment student are only offered to our students in 11th and 12th grade. Students can only take college classes through the FSW campus or FSW online and students must be enrolled in a minimum of 12 credit hours. So what courses can I take? Students are allowed to take academic college level courses, but they're all prerequisites must be met for all of the courses. Students will meet with their counselor to generate a schedule and complete a DocuSign. And any schedule changes must be approved by your school representative. How many courses can I take? So juniors and seniors can take up to 15 credits per semester, sophomores up to nine credits per semester, and freshmen will need permission before becoming a dual enrollment student. All classes must be at least three credits and be taken for a letter grade. So where do I take classes? Um, students can take classes in three different formats with any combination. We offer it here at North, so at your high school, online or at the FSW State College campuses. So classes at North, we're very fortunate. We have a good amount of DE concurrent classes, as we call it. Um, so the DE teachers here at North are FSW faculty. So they are still have the same credentials as in guidelines as the hiring and process and course expectations that you would see at an FSW campus. So some of the classes that we offer here are college algebra, biology, comp one and comp two, American government and US history. Registration. So students meet with their counselor to determine their course selection. Registration forms are turned in online via the DocuSign. So you, the school counselor can send you the link or you have the opportunity to have the link. We usually post those in Google Classroom. And once the students are complete with the DocuSign, any changes would have to be completed on a DocuSign again. So you cannot change your, your classes through the FSW portal. Continued eligibility. So if you're here, you're, you're FSW DE student, whether full time or part time, you have to maintain that 2.0 to remain DE uh, student. And it also impacts your financial aid once you're a senior and graduating and looking to apply for colleges. You also must maintain a 2.0 GPA for high school graduation as well. You have to have all those college level class uh, test scores completed, whether it's the Accuplacer, ACT, or SAT. And you, if you do not meet those, then you will no longer be part of the DE program. Some important things to think about is grades. So the DE classes do boost your, your GPA, which is your weighted GPA. You cannot repeat a DE class. So it's really important for you to, to know that if you fail, then for instance, comp one, if you fail comp one, you have to have a C or higher to take comp two. And a lot of classes do have prerequisites. So it's important for you to make sure you're maintaining that C average or higher. The grades stay with you. So they're on your high school transcript as well as your college transcript. So when you apply to colleges, you, apply, you request your high school transcript, but you're also going to be requesting your FSW transcript as well. So it's important to know um, it, it will impact your future moving forward. Grades, like I said, can impact your bright futures as well as your financial aid for, for your college or university once you graduate. So FSW provides different types of class schedules. Um, they have day, they have night and Saturday or a blended learning or e-learning. So just be mindful when registering that you're not having any conflict with your high school schedule, if you're part-time or any home or work commitments. 
speaking of work commitments or your time management, it's really important for you to realize when you're taking classes that one class, which is three credits, your expectation is about nine hours outside of that class. So you're, that's reading your textbook, that's completing your assignment. So one class could make 12 hours per week of um, expectations. So just when you're taking classes, if you're thinking about full-time or part-time, just be mindful of your what your after-school responsibilities are, whether it's at home, whether it's work, sports, clubs, volunteer, because a 12 credits, which is four classes, could take about 48 hours a week. So it is a big com commitment, it's worth it, but I just wanted you to be mindful of it. Some things to be aware of, some important dates. So the college calendar and the high school calendar are separate calendars. So please make sure you are marking the difference between them. For instance, this year, uh, FSW Online and Campus ended their class in December and our concurrent classes still continued in January. So it's really important that you're uh, looking at those schedules to make sure that there's no conflicts, whether if you're staying and taking some classes at North um, and then also just making sure that the classes are a time that you are able to do it. Check the syllabus. That is an important thing. Once you get into Canvas and you are selecting your classes, look at the, the syllabus for your textbooks. Once again, we can get those for you for free, but just making sure you know which textbooks are required, when those classes are, when the deadlines are, and it will give you your instructor's information. Because even though you're a high school student, you do not get special consideration. So just know once you're stepping put, foot, whether it's a concurrent class or at FSW or online, you are considered a college student. So it's really important that you are being mindful of turning things in and, and um, in a timely manner. So FSW also has an adaptive services. So if you're needing, if you have an IEP or a 504, you can reach out to Ashley about some additional support adaptive services they can provide for you. And also going to that link gives you more of a resource of how to contact them. So academic success centers. So you should take advantage now that you're also a FSW buck of all the campus resources. So if you're struggling in the class or maybe needing a little extra help, there's a writing center, there's a math center, um, oral communications, and also peer tutoring. And if you click on the link below there, it will tell you what classes peer tutoring is. Right now they're online, but hopefully maybe we can get back to face-to-face. -to -face. But for each of the peer tutoring courses, they're at different times. So that will give you the schedule. They also have a library and you can access the library by going on site to the center or off site at the library. And they also have phone assistance if you're needing help navigating through that. But it's a great resource as a college student. I use this all the time. Um, you can look at books, you can rent journal articles, DVDs. Um, it helps you to stream videos. So there's a lot the library can do to help you in your courses. Also something important for you to think about, once you're a buck, you are a part of their student life. So they have different organizations, different events that happen throughout the year. So it's really important that you are paying attention to their Twitter or their Facebook page to kind of see what events that they're offered. And we encourage you to do that as well. FERPA, so under the Family Education Rights to Privacy Act, FSW cannot release any information without student consent. So even though DE students are in high school, we cannot share information with parents. So your grades will not be in focus, it will be in the Canvas. So as a DE student, it's really important that you're also time managing and checking those on a timely manner as well. Students can sign a release in, in, the, in person at the registration office if they would like someone else to have access to their records. This wraps up our short presentation on DE. I hope that uh, this allows you to make an educated decision. I know that this is an important decision, so it's very important for you to talk about it as a family, as well as reach out to your alpha counselor. I have them listed here below for the names, the 
the breakdown for the alpha and their emails. I am the DE contact, so feel free to also reach out to me. So I, I hope this you find this helpful and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye.